Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! And welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. It's been a while. It's been a while since we had Sabaton. Alan, it's been a while, hasn't it? Too long. Yeah, yeah. And we got on the phone with us. The one, the only, Joaquin Broden. Hello, everyone. <laughs> the singer of Sabaton. Of the hardest working band in metal. Well, not the last year and a half, at least. <laughs> no. You, hey, that was probably a well-deserved break for you guys, unnecessarily so. Yeah, it was weird, but, I mean, we kept busy. We started we started off by, yeah, we were touring up until late or mid-March or something like that, because Russia didn't lock down until quite a bit later, actually, when we were there on tour. And then yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we decided to make the best of it. So we've uh, we've done a whole bunch of recordings and other things. We have a lot of stuff in the pipeline ready to go now. Yeah, well, I, I think the most exciting thing is before we get to the recordings is, wow, touring with Judas Priest in North America and other parts of the world. Can you tell us how that came about? Oh. <laughs> well, give us yeah, the short story. story. Give us the short story. The short story is, uh, I, I don't know exactly how, but we, we, we played with Priest the first time in 2010 in Berlin. And uh, we've had, you know, we've run into each other on festivals and it's all about timing. I mean, we've, yeah, being, you know, kids, we were one of the, our first favorite bands were Judas Priest. I mean, obviously, uh, we wanted to tour with them even before they knew we existed. But uh, finally, I mean, it was supposed to be last year, but finally we may managed to get the timing right, you know, with album releases and when, when you're able to tour and stuff. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Doubly so, because, yeah, we haven't been touring much lately. And also to be touring with, yeah, one of our favorite bands of all time. Can't be better, huh? Oh, no, I mean, it just, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Alan. Alan saw you when you guys opened up for Accept. Yeah, You Accept guys have the... come a long way. Uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. You've been building your reputation here in North America by working so hard, and now you're hitting the, the major, major stadiums here or larger venues with Judas Priest. So, Yeah, I mean, it was actually our first tour. We had played America a few years earlier. 2008 at Prog Power Festival, but uh, the Accept Tour was 2011. That's 10 years ago now, and that was oh. the first proper tour in America. <laughs> that so, was a great yeah. double bill. Yeah, and I mean another one of our you know favorite bands growing up. Uh, so I'm not complaining. We played with a lot of <laughs> a lot of bands we grew up listening to. I mean we were. It's kind of weird actually because we've always been that sort of in between band. You know we. Our first demos and, you know, recordings were done on analog gear. But <laughs> we were among the first to adopt, you know, go to CD when you start burning your own CDs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we were in the middle of the streaming thing. So we were, yeah, we never had, you know, these, you know, when you talk to other people, the old days when you would sell albums like, you know, insane amounts. We never saw that, actually. So... We're sort of in between. We're not a new generation band because we've been around since 1999. Um, but we couldn't say we're, you know, old school either because they're, those guys started way, way earlier than us. But we've been, you know, a part of a big shift in the industry, if you will. Just just one of the, the last interview we did with you was Heavy MTL. And, and you guys are joking how you burn through members because they can't keep up with your tour schedule. So now with, <laughs> with this break, you guys have become some consistency now with the, with the tour members, with the band members? Yeah, we hope so. We never wanted <laughs> to change anyone. <laughs> no, it's just... Uh, also, the biggest difference, I'd say, is uh, getting... You know, for us especially, starting out from a small town in Sweden, all loving heavy metal and wanting to be a rock musician at any cost, at any price. And then the reality of it, the touring and, the, I mean, this life isn't for everybody. So actually, most other people in the business or other bands we've met, they said, like, we're just surprised you guys stayed 
with a sort of, well, not original lineup, but sort of original lineup so long because most bands have that, you know, transition way earlier. But we stayed there until 2011, sort of. We didn't change much members between yeah, 99, 2000 until, yeah, we got a keyboarder, but uh, that was about it, you know. Yeah, but then it yeah. comes a time when, you know, people are getting married or about to get married, having kids or about to get kids and having a work job on the side. Me and Pat never did. And we wanted to play. And then we realized that they wanted different things. They wanted to play heavy metal, yes, but not not professionally. They on the weekends. To, Weekend yeah, sort of, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, not, not in a bad way. I don't hate them at all for it, but they wanted a different life. So we sort of like, oh, shit, I thought we'd been working to, you know, to make it, but then we didn't. So luckily enough, we didn't end up killing each other, you know, to total implosion of the band. And when after that, it's been more stable. I interviewed Parr when you played the last time in Montreal. And I asked him this question. I'm going to ask you the question. What has been the key to such enormous, like you're an anomaly. Sabaton is a band that is getting bigger and bigger in an era when everybody can't get bigger and bigger. What is the key to your success, business-wise? Oh, I mean, we can't take all the credit here because it's a matter of timing and luck. I mean, yes, there is, I'm not saying, you know, a lot of grit, hard work. Uh, don't don't ever give up. Work harder. Uh, yeah, you have to, that's the thing, you know. There's those, most people who sort of are going the right way have made the right decisions, have worked hard. But there's a lot of people who have done equally, equally hard work and equally good work who haven't made it uh, because of, yeah, timing, sometimes luck, all of these things. And uh, I mean, when we started, heavy metal was, well, our melodic metal was dead. And I mean, dead, not only in the US, but in Europe as well. Uh, so that was weird. But that started coming back. And at the time when we, our weird days as a shitty garage band were, were <laughs> oh, n- not over, I would say, but uh, let's be honest, we weren't very good in the beginning, but we were really willing to work hard and be disciplined about rehearsals, working on harmony vocals and, you know, being better and, you know, trying to improve all the time. Maybe that's one of the keys, you know, never, never being complacent, really, but rather trying to improve all the time. You know, not sit back, ah, that tour was great. Uh, now let's keep that stage set and uh, we can't eclipse that. So sort of always thinking, hmm, what can we do better? How can we tweak this? How can we write better songs? How can we make a more impressive show? How can we be better at playing, you know? Well, you know, every album is like a history lesson. It, it's unbelievable how how the lyrics and the storytelling. Do you think history and, and what you guys sing about plays a part into your success? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there are enough bands singing about uh, motorcycles, uh, women, and dragons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are so many fantastic stories in our past that are being forgotten. So why, why make up new ones somehow, you know, at the same time? And uh, yeah, of course, our music sometimes triggers, you know, nationalistic feelings. And if it's not in a, in a you know, totally crazy way, that could could possibly be a good thing where you know uh, it could be good that people learn something from it I mean obviously the main reason we do this is not to teach history but if somebody gets historically interested that's I think a good thing you know it's funny I think you know you talk about different sides of war I kind of you know like you talk about it then I go maybe this is going to start a war <laughs> you, you know what I mean right you're in yeah, Poland all, talking I mean, about the Germans and you're in Germans talking about the Polish you know it's yeah we're always controversial somewhere because you know back in uh, we first albums we did that were well uh, military history related which would be Primo Victoria and Terra Menatus we actually got blacklisted which is the Thing they have in Germany for anything connected with, uh, yeah, the Nazis and stuff like that. Uh, things that aren't allowed, censorship. And they, because we had the word Nazi in the intro to the song Primo Victoria, but it's about the D-Day landings. But to get rid of that, we had to sort of submit all our lyrics to the whole album to get it off that blacklist. 
Yeah. But <laughs> the best thing was they told us then, well, and our record label at the time as well. Well, guys, so next time then you've learned this, don't put the word Nazi in the first song during the intro. Oh, we said, okay. So we put it in the first song during the first verse. <laughs> and if we are going to see about military history, they, a lot of people have said, but you can sing other parts about history. Yeah, but here's the thing. You're only shifting the focus. If you're singing about military history of at least decently recent times, and let's go back at least, say, 500 years, there's always one country is going to feel uncomfortable about yeah, the topic. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay, so from the past, let's go to the future. So what are you writing now? Where are you going? Where, where, where's Sabaton going to take us next? On what journey? What war? What war are we talking about? What's the next new album going to sound like? Well, it's very much a Sabaton album in that way, but that's always been, you know, uh, we've been an evolutionary band always and not a revolutionary band. That, you know, uh, there is always surprises on a Sabaton album, but we're never going to, you know, flip the coin and you know, do something totally different on every song on a new album. There's going to be surprises in every album. And I'm actually... Uh, listening to and approving masters, uh, the master of the new album right now. I think why it's always subjective. I, I think it's pathetic when an artist goes and says, it's the best album we ever made. And, you know, they keep promoting the same tired line. I, I, I say it's up to the listener to decide that. But I know for a fact that everybody in the band, without, you know, even... Uh, without even sitting in the same room together, because I, you know, sort of shift out the pre-mixes to everyone and everybody and this is the only time in our history this has happened everybody came back with fuck that sounds great you know yes. everybody's super happy with the production and i mean we were always happy before but it was like yeah maybe this maybe that now it was more like okay yeah i have some suggestions and ideas but wow i'm it, really it, happy with the sound lesson what lesson are we going to learn this time around and and where are you going with that? I mean, and again, if you don't want to reveal it, I mean, just maybe a high, high level of where it's going. <laughs> well, it's, it's about uh, war. We know it's about war. Yeah, we know it's about war. That, damn, you took my line. <laughs> <laughs> you took my line. Uh, well, let's, I, I can't reveal the exact topic, but we are doing uh, modern warfare, uh, 20th century. Okay. All right. Ah. All right, and and what about these? Uh, then you have these living guard. I don't know if you the Swedish version of the new single, right? You have defense of Moscow. You have war to. Uh, you have the, what is it? The 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 battle war. Sorry, yes, King, yeah. kingdom come. Are these going to end up as bonus tracks on the new album? No, no, no. They're totally separate from the new album. We, I mean, we have some time, and we 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 don't like sitting still. So we have. Um... Those are not on the album at all. We have a complete album plus plus those tracks plus a ah, bit more. Okay, I know there's a surprise tomorrow and on Friday, so uh, I guess we'll know tomorrow what that is. Yeah, there there are are a lot of announcements and stuff happening right now in our camp. At least we have a few few interesting things down the pipeline. A few sort of expected, a few totally unexpected. Alan. No, oh, and again, you know, we spoke about Accept, Ice Earth, uh, now Judas Priest. Is there any other of your heroes that you, you like to tour with that you, uh, or you had the occasion to tour with? And we had the occasion to tour with them, some, a few, actually. Iron Maiden and the Scorpions, which we are really grateful for, uh, have, you know, not only played with, but met and had fun with at certain times, maybe too much fun at <laughs> other times. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the weirdest thing is all these years, I've never seen Metallica because we were always so busy. And I never oh, had that. But now we one. are on this tour. We're playing on the same festival. Mm. So ah, I am uh, yeah. going to have a chance to catch Metallica live, which is going to be nice. Are, are you worried... Okay, now we're here. Okay, there was a lot of tours being booked, and now we're hearing a lot of. I don't want to jinx this, but a lot of tours being canceled or postponed. We'll say. I mean, are you worried that this North American tour might fall apart, or the European tours? Because you know, or you feel more confident this time around. Well, I, I have no. We we have not heard anything. Because this is obviously Judas Priest's tour. But we have not yeah. heard anything from them about change plans at all. Uh, 
So I'm pretty confident as you know, as long as we're allowed, I'm not really worried about the business. I'm more worried about the politicians in England implementing lockdowns or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, no, I'm not that worried. I, I am pretty as, as confident as you can be these days that mm -hmm. we're going to come over and play some heavy metal. Of course, uh, uncertain times. I can in, in no way guarantee that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah for but sure. I, I do believe sure. it's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan? We had to we had to move ahead at some point, so at least they're booked and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, in a sense, absolutely, and especially we can't be in a you know in a sort of put the world in a pause mode for you know an eternity. And, and if you want to tell everybody about the History Channel and what does that mean to Sabaton? I mean, I know about it. Alan knows about it, but tell the people who don't know about the History Channel, the Sabaton. History Channel, so they could stay yeah. tuned to that. I'm sure. Yeah, it's actually something we're really proud of and happy about because it's you know, Sabaton History Channel is a YouTube channel and it's basically free to watch. And you know, we had this dream maybe 15 years ago when we started singing about military history that wow, these things are so interesting, but we we can't cover it all. I mean, we got three to five minutes, or maybe it's six, seven sometimes, and. You know, we can't cover a whole conflict or a whole battle in you know only that amount of time and in a context of a heavy metal song but now we have the possibility maybe not full science documentaries but we're talking about a you know historical segment written well mostly by historical experts and historians uh, the host is a historian and an American uh, called Indy Nadel uh, from Texas, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, we have a sort of, well, me and Pat are usually the ones involved in the episodes, and we only do the introduction and then sort of an interview after the historical segment. Every episode is about 15 minutes, and about 10 of those in the middle are usually, well, the historical part. And it, I mean, that's not the end, but it's a deeper dive, and a, gives a little bit of a more understanding in the choice of words we might have in the lyrics, or in the interview after you can hear maybe a touring story about that song or how it came to be in the studio or whatever so it's um yeah i think that goes i think i think that goes to my i think that goes to my sorry to cut you off i think that goes to my initial question what your success is all about it's your involvement in your music and from every angle you know from history channel to writing the lyrics to telling stories and that really separates you from everybody else, I think, right? Maybe there's, maybe that you're closer to it than you think there, because I mean, yes, the, the the most human thing there is actually is telling stories. I mean, if you meet somebody in a bar, you're going to end up telling a story, even if you're only telling about, you know, even if you're on a bad first date, there's going to be storytelling, you know? Talk uh, about dragons. <laughs> I've, I've dated a few. <laughs> Is there any is there anything else, Joaquim, you want to sort of mention, you want to promote uh, before we let you go? No, I I don't really feel comfortable promoting stuff. I uh, would we'll just talk about. I, I would I would like to encourage people to uh, come and see a show or check us out or you know don't let this uh, pandemic bring you down more than it has to. Things have to progress and move on, and I'm pretty sure they will. Okay. So let's make the best out of it while we can. All right. The tour, to end all tours, Alan, two weeks. I mean, in, <laughs> I guess this is starting in September. 26 cities and 17 countries bringing the groundbreaking modern metal to the people and delivering breathtaking live shows in a setting that will once again <laughs> set new bars for concerts of this kind. Sabaton will be supported. Of course, they will support Judas Priest and listen to this, Alan, the Mongolian rock band The Who and the Finnish Ooh, heavy metal yes. veterans Lordy in North. I guess that's in Europe, right? Yep. Hmm, Absolutely. The Who. What do you think about The Who? Not The Who. I love but it, the man. Who. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's. Uh, I saw them actually live in. Ooh, was this not, summer of nineteen? It must have been then. Rock am Ring and Rockin' Park in Germany. And that's when we sort of, because we had our eyes on them and we thought it was really cool and different and interesting. And 
yeah, I mean, we came across them basically by cool videos, and they had a song about Genghis Khan, which sort of, <clears throat> yeah, crosses our yeah. path in a way. <laughs> yeah, they're infringing on your territory there. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, we better watch out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you so much. I, I, I got a question for you. Why, why do you think the Who yeah. is is logged into the metal community? They're tr traditional Mongolian music, but the metal community has embraced them. I have no idea, but I think it's not only the metal community. Metal community is one of the communities who has embraced them. They are so new and something different. And I mean, the music and the style they do, it's primal and it's, you know, pentatonic at least in a way. So that basic musical, uh, what, is it, what do you call it? Foundation is similar for most kinds of music. So I think mm -hmm. uh, they are, you know, going across other genres. We, of course, being a part of the metal community, see them, oh, they're, you know, who coming in, something new and fresh coming into our territory. But I think there's a good chance that is people in other, you know, uh, musical genres feeling the same way about them. And just before letting it go, I want to know, where's the tank right now? What'd you do with the tank? Uh, we have two. One is on the, the, one is on the way to the Czech Republic, <laughs> and one is on its way to America. Ah, okay. Oh. Well, hopefully you won't have any problems tank. like you did with customs as you did last time. Hopefully it'll go through customs a lot easier. Like, what, do you, what do you do at customs? Like, okay, this is my tank. Here's my paperwork uh, it's, for it's, the tank. Uh, <laughs> it's very much dismantled. And we, in the beginning, we, we sort of named things after what they were, like tank and, you know, artillery, and we fought like that's a bad idea let's call yes. it, let's call it stage prop first yes and then, yes on the closer description a stage prop in this material when built together might resemble a tank you know you <laughs> yeah yeah uh, all right we're at right at 25 minutes all thank right. you so much joaquin we'll see you on tour in montreal canada all right all right thank you very much guys thank Have you take nice, care great day. see you in a few weeks <laughs>